Hello and welcome to On The Bench Extra, the Christmas special. It's been a wonderful six months in local football and in turn a delight to have followed it every step of the way. We've had many sporting guests from the region in our studio, so let's start by taking a look at one of them. This is Alan Buckley. Your career as a manager, any standout moments for you, any standout results? Well, I mean, there's a few obviously, you know, I've done about 1,200 games as a manager from the age of 28. Yeah. The fantastic cup runs at Warsaw, we, a milk cup run there in 83-84 where we ended up playing Liverpool over two legs in the semi-final of the milk cup, which yeah. is the Carling Cup now, is yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, it is, yeah. Um, yeah, fantastic away performances, winning at Arsenal. Obviously at Grimsby when I first came, you know, we won away at uh, Middlesbrough against all the odds fantastic in my result. first season. Yeah. Uh, where we've just started to get things going a little bit then. And since then, obviously, there's been some fantastic results, seasons, overall seasons even, not just results, but it's been a fantastic spell, yeah. Who would you say has been your best signing, you know, at any club as a manager? Um, Snakes at West Brom was an outstanding player. Yeah. But he was very arrogant, uh, thought he could do everybody's job better than themselves. Uh, Groves, he was a fantastic signing for the number of games and the amount of goals he scored and the sort of lad he was, he was fantastic. One or two players I inherited, you know, like Macca, yeah. uh, Kevin Donovan and people. And Futch, Paul Futcher. I mean, there's been so many terrific, terrific players that played under me. Fantastic. But yeah. Futch came here, his career was in tatters. We'll, we'll come back to that, Alan. Yeah. Thank you for that. Lots of players there. And so we'll talk about the book, obviously. You yes, wrote the book. I did. Obviously, it's Alan's sort of story. So, talk us through the process of writing that book. Um, it, it's a, it was a strange process in the sense where you, I'm trying to be Alan when I'm writing it. Um, so, what would happen is I go to his house. He's very welcoming, and we'd just chat. And I'd ask him a question, as you have today, and, and luckily today he's just answered it within a minute. You know, some of these questions I would ask <laughs> would take um, hours. Hours. He used to prick me. Conscience, really. What about this? What about that? And while things were coming into my mind, I just used to elaborate, and then after about ten minutes, go back to the first question he asked anyway. You know, yeah. but that's the way it was. Paul yeah. were very patient, and I think the way he went about it was absolutely brilliant. And when you see the finished article and the yeah. fact that they all sold out within a couple of months, the first issue is it, Paul? That's right, yeah. You know, very proud about that. Yeah, very proud. Do we see any any further books coming out? Well, Paul keeps on about, uh, you know, we try to get everything in that one. Yeah. And it's not evil. Uh, I've just told it like it was, the truth. We haven't really elaborated about anything. If people are interested, then they'll read it. If they're not, well, they're not going to read it, are they? But uh, I really enjoyed working with Paul on it. But I had the easy part. He did all the hard work. I thoroughly enjoyed that interview. So thank you, Alan, for that. Later in the show, we have our whole Scunthorpe, Grimsby and North Ferriby Christmas 11. But first, another great pair on the show, Rachel Gay and Joe Symington from the Hull City Ladies. Lucky. So, welcome to the show, Rachel. Thank you very much. How's this season going so far? Yeah, so far so good. Um, we got a good 6-0 win at the weekend. Um, so that brings us into third place. Um, Two teams above us are on 19, we're on 18 points um, and we've got to play them twice as well. So um, the league's back in our hands. Um, we had a little bit of a dodgy start to the season. Uh, we lost two games, which is um, not like us really. Uh, I think we went through the whole of the last season and we'd only lost two or three. So, um, you know, we've, uh, we've put ourselves back in the, in the frame again and, um, yeah, we're, we're doing well. And fantastic result last weekend, 6-0. Yeah, very good. Um, our strikers are on fire at the moment. Um, you know, we're attacking really well. We're playing some really good football. Um, and defensively, to keep a clean sheet is a massive bonus. Doing really well. When myself and Reedy came down to start of the season, you said that the aim was promotion. You wanted to win the yeah. league. Yeah. That's still the case. Oh, definitely. We, uh, you know, we have to we have to get promotion this year. We've been so close in previous seasons. Last year we was one goal away from promotion, which is pretty hard to take. So we need to, um, you know, rebuild and uh, improve in, in certain areas. And we've we've done that this year. Uh, like I said, we're playing some really good football, probably the best we've ever played. And uh, promotion is definitely what we need to get this year. Been in charge for 17 games, won five, drawn seven, lost five. They're currently 21st in the league. Joe, what do you think to, to how he's getting on? Well, 
Well, I don't think it's that bad, really, considering, you know, his, how many did you say he's drawn? He's drawn seven. Seven. So he's not losing them all, but obviously he obviously needs to step up a bit. Um, but I don't think it's all down to him. It's obviously down to the players as well. Exactly. I think that's a very good point. Um, I think what, what would be the situation if you were, if your team, if the Hull City ladies, the strikers weren't scoring? Would you be getting frustrated with them? Oh, yeah, you'd be getting frustrated because obviously they're the ones who were there to put the girls away. So I'd probably put them to defenders who were scoring up front. <laughs> <laughs> maybe like, that's the idea. Put Lewis Dunk up front, maybe. Yeah, yeah well, try that, see if it works. <laughs> like Rachel said in the first half, you know, they're, top, they're the ladies' top scorers on 40 plus goals. You take that out of the team, you're yeah. going to miss that. Oh, yeah. yeah. I was having a look before the show and uh, some of your stats that you said about your strikers are on form. Yeah. You've been scoring a lot of goals at home. What's been the reason behind that? Um, to be honest, I'm not sure. I think at home and away we score, we score a lot of goals. I think, um, you know, it's Peter Lee away and uh, I think we knocked eight past them. So, uh, you know, we, we are home and away pretty consistent. And I think that's credit to our strikers, but also, um, you know, our midfielders are, um, are really gelling at the moment. We've got quite a lot of midfielders and it's finding the right balance uh, for the, the certain games that we're playing, whether we need strength or speed or, but the, the, you know, we're just getting that right balance in the midfield at the moment and um, they're playing some great balls through and the strikers are just burying them. Now, Rachel invited Hardy and myself to meet and train with the ladies' first team and I'm definitely not fit enough. Let's take a look back. Right, we've come to Hull to meet the Hull City ladies football team and to find out their aspirations for the upcoming season. They've been putting us through our paces, so let's see how we got. So, we've met the players, that were hard work, that. <laughs> now let's meet the chairman and the manager. Pre-season's gone really, really well. So we're looking this Sunday to our first league fixture against Whitley Bay. Um, one of our big contenders, I think, for promotion this season. We're really looking forward to it. The squad's really energised, they're really up for it. There's a lot of people talking about us in the city as well. We've got to go on the pitch now, and that's where <laughs> Rachel and Danny's job comes in. We're a very ambitious club. Um, and hopefully this year, if it all goes to plan, we will finish top, we'll go up and uh, we do have a six year plan in place um, to take us through to the Super League. Uh, we're looking for sponsors, this is something else I'm trying to do, bring people on board who will inject a bit of money. Mr Alam, the owner of Hull City, is our big sponsor and we're eternally grateful for all his support that he's put into the club. You've got to go in with that same mentality and uh, we've got to be consistent this year, we, we can't be dropping points. And we haven't been invited back since. Thank you for that, girls. So, before the show went to air, we had the idea of a head-to-head -head challenge. So, we went with it. So, let's take a look back at some of those moments. In 30 seconds, can you name Liverpool's team from the 2005 Champions League final against AC Milan? Dudak. Finnan. Hippia. Risa. Uh, Carragher, uh, Gerard, Biscan, Harman, uh, Diaw. In 30 seconds, can you name the whole city team from the 2008 Championship playoff final? Myhill, um, Ian Ashby, Dean Windass. Myhill, Barnby. Dean Windass, Giovanni, Ricketts, um, Nick Barnby, um, Paul McShane, um, oh this is hard, um, Kotcher, Ian Ashby, 
Bernard Mendy. In 30 seconds, can you name any of the 23 managers to have managed over 1,000 games? Sir Alex Ferguson. Uh, Lenny Lawrence. Arsene Wenger. Um, na uh, Ryan Clough. Um, Bill Shankly. Sir Alex Ferguson. Is Nigel Clough? Uh, Brian Clough? Um, Bobby Robson. Uh, Bobby Charlton. Uh, Gary Speed. Um, that's difficult, that's tough. Um, uh, Jose Mourinho? Um, John Tosha. Um, John Gregory. Uh... Thanks, Greg, for that question. We'll see the next part in the second part of the show. So, Hardy beating me in all of those but two of the series so far, I think. So, like tradition, here's a half-time teaser. Out of Hull, Scunthorpe and Grimsby, who had the best result last New Year's Day and who against? See you after the break. Welcome back to Extra, the Christmas special. Now, Scunthorpe had the best result last New Year's Day with a 3-0 win over Rochdale. Now, before we come to an end, I will share with you our local football Christmas 11. But before we do that, let's look at another guest, Rob Underwood of Estuary TV and BBC Radio Lincolnshire. He was on the show recently. Joining me on the show today, alongside our regular, my co-presenter Tom Reid, is Rob Underwood from BBC Radio Lincolnshire and, of course, on the bench. Could you just talk about your role with BBC Radio Lincolnshire? Yeah, certainly. Uh, I'm involved in uh, park commentary on Lincoln City, home and away in the conference. Radio Lincolnshire's commitment to the fans, of course, as you'd expect from BBC Local Radio, is to keep them abreast of every goal, every kick throughout the season. And uh, basically, that's what I'm involved in. Uh, upcoming games. You're doing the Lincoln game this week, I believe. Yeah, weekend. FA Trophy this weekend. Uh, the Imps getting to know Alfreton very well, of course. They drew them in the FA Cup <laughs> some time ago, uh, involved in a replay. Two games in the league. Conceivably, they could play Alfreton six times this season. So wow, we'll that's see. quite scary. How do you think they're going to fare this weekend against Alfreton in the FA Trophy? Interesting, really. Who's to say? I think it's an interesting time at Lincoln. Chris Moyes has just been officially appointed as first team manager after his sort of honeymoon in interim period, if you like. Um, so I think the fans are quite optimistic and up for it. Three wins on the bounce at home in the league. Uh, it's got to give them, you know, good spirit. What have they been like this season in, t in comparison to previous years? Um, I think they've not really lived up to expectations. He has got a very good squad there, Chris Moyes is at the moment. I think everybody acknowledges that, but they haven't delivered. They weren't really delivering under Gary Simpson. They were just doing enough. But now the players seem to be happier, playing with a freer sort of spirit, if you like, and that's showing in the results. And the start of the season, I, th I remember them starting reasonably promisingly. Um, yeah. it, was, it was quite good at the start of the season, and then things tailed off. Obviously, they had the change in manager. So do you think that's caused a, a difference in the players' approach? Uh, I think so, yeah. And last season as well, they got off to a cracking start, but then just fell away. But uh, as I say, now I think the players are believing what they can do within the squad. There's great camaraderie, and that's showing, as I say, in the results, home and away. Realistically, where can you see them coming in, in terms of the league? I asked them that question this week, actually, <laughs> after the win. Uh, against an uneaten in midweek and I think the sky's the limit was a term that was used and I think really with a, a run of decent winnable fixtures up to Christmas and just into the new year I think really Lincoln could go places in the new year. Yeah. So on the show we like to test our guest's memory as well so we're going to put Rob on the spot here he doesn't know what's coming so this could be fantastic. Rob seconds. or something. <laughs> you've got 30 seconds to name the starting 11 from Grimsby Town's FA Trophy 2013 losing finalist side. How 30 long? seconds. Go. Um, McEwen. Yes. Sean Pearson. Yes. Um, Cook. Yes. Thomas. Yes. Hatton. Uh, Ross Hanna. Yes. Craig Disley. Yes. Um, Marshall. Yes. Uh, Sean Pearson. I've said him. Um, Artists, yes. Fantastic. That's nine, Rob. Uh, That's really, nine. That very well really done. Good. Now, one of my personal favourite interviews was with Grimsby Town forward John Paul Pittman. 
He was great on screen and off screen. So let's take a look at when he came into our studio. First of all, welcome John. Could you just tell us how you've found your time at Grimsby so far? Yeah, it's been good. Um, I've been happy with how things have gone. Settled in quite nicely, quite quickly. And um, yeah, no complaints. And how have you found the, the sort of style of football and the way that Grimsby play? Yeah, I'm enjoying the style of football. You know, uh, we like to get it down and pass it, but without overplaying, as I've, I've seen, you know, throughout my career, we still like to get it forward early if, if we can do. So yeah, it's, uh, it suits my game. It suits how I play. How have you? How are you feeling in yourself now? Because obviously you had the injury. Uh, back to full fitness now. Yeah, back to full fitness now. Well, um, there or thereabouts. I've had a few days training. Uh, I'll be in contention for, you know, the coming games. So. You know, happy. How annoying was it for you when he was on such a good run of form, banging in the goals to, to get an injury? How frustrating was that? Yeah, well, I was saying earlier, like, um, you know, I had a little purple patch where I was doing well, and, you know, that's been sandwiched with a couple of injuries, you know, so it's a little bit frustrating, a little bit stop start, but I like to remain positive and look forward rather than, you know, what's gone. And availability for over the coming weeks, you, you know, you're feeling well in yourself and, and you're hoping to get back into the, into the first team? Yeah, yeah, well, look, I only missed, uh, missed a month, you know, I say only, it's just tough being in the treatment room and in the gym when everyone else is out training and enjoying themselves. Um, but I haven't, lost in a, I haven't lost an awful lot of match fitness, so, you know, that's a positive. Just looking at a tweet that we've had from, from some of the viewers, um, Joe Mackey says, what's been your best season as a footballer and what's your goals and aims for this season? Um, I'm torn with that one, really. I'm torn. I mean, the, the season I left, the season I left the football league and joined Crawley in the conference. That was a good, that was a good year and a half for me, really, because uh, I ended up getting bought by Wickham, Peter Taylor, and stuff. But I'd have to say it's my my season in League One, uh, where we played against some big boys that season: Charlton, you know, Leeds. There was a few other MK Dons were there. Um, it was a good, it was a good season for me. And what was it like working under Peter Taylor? Yeah, that was good. Obviously, ex England. Uh, credentials and I think he gave David Beckham his captaincy or something, something outrageous like that. So <laughs> he used to get frustrated with us, to be fair, because he's used to working with such high quality players. We used to frustrate him because he couldn't, we couldn't quite meet his demands, but he was a really good manager. I, I enjoyed working with Peter Taylor. Brilliant. Thank you very much, JP. Um, Steve Harper, I'm not thinking about retiring. Steve Harper seems like he has been around forever, <laughs> literally forever, um, but he said he's not retiring. JP, what do you think to Steve Harper? Obviously, he's, he's a decent pro um, to still be playing now and to be thinking about, you know, not packing in anytime soon. So, fair play to him. Steve, JP, you said you liked the, the pies at Grimsby. Yeah, I had a pie the other week at Grimsby and I thought it was one of the nicest pies I've ever had. I think they could probably charge a little bit more for it. No, I'm only joking. <laughs> they, um, no, it was, it was nice. I mean, the club's got to make make some money, cover costs and whatnot, and if you're going to provide a decent service for that, then you can't complain. I would definitely, definitely have JP back. So JP, if you're watching, give us a call. Just before we move on, let's take a look back at some of the other guests from the region to have joined us. So let's look at this. You know, we, no, we didn't get hammered by anybody. I think it was just, you know, tweaking one or two things here or there. And like, like you said, Stu, he, he mentioned, uh, you know, Andrews Townsend. You know, he was the one player that was kind of getting people's bit between the teeth. And then what happens? He, he gets injured and everybody's down a bit. I, I think watching England's a bit like watching Grimsby over the years <laughs> in, in the terms of like England are the, the international Grimsby and Grimsby are the... Uh, the, the, the Leeds England. The, the, yeah, <laughs> the Leeds England kind of thing. So Craig, we'll, we'll start with you. We'll, we'll talk about the Mariners' current season. How, how would you assess that so far? Uh, I think it's it's been up and down, I think. Um, but I think on the whole that we've... Um, we're in a good position um, and it's, it's in our hands at the end of the day. If we can put a sustained run together now, between now and the end of the season, we're not going to be far away. Could you just give us a bit of a basis about your role and what you do with the East Riding FA? Yeah, my role with East Riding FA is the uh, Disability Football Development Officer. So basically that is um, trying to develop disability football throughout Hull and East Riding, um, trying to increase the profile of, dis of um, disability football, um, trying to um, get more people playing, um, trying to increase the provision available so more people can sort of participate within disability football um, and kind of get the sport out there for people that didn't know um, that it existed or um, for people with a disability that didn't think that they could actually play football. So. So, so thank you to everyone who appeared on the show so far and for sharing your football views with us. So for the past month we've been compiling the best Christmas 11 we can, so here it is. 
So we'll start with Sam Snowcombe in goal of Scunthorpe United. Number two is one of my favourites, Russell Sprouts Fry. Obviously Russell Fry from North Ferriby. Ahmed Elf Mohammadi from Hull City is a great one. And look at this one, Curtis Slavis from Hull. This one is a cracker, Christmas Doig of Grimsby. Craig Slay of Grimsby as well, well done for that one. Tom Mince Pies, <laughs> terrible. Uh, Sherry Hawkridge of Scunthorpe United, that is a great one. And there was some debate over this one. Grimsby's forward, Lanell Jonah Louie, it's a fantastic one. Number 10, you should get this Liam Fran King sense. Liam King, obviously, of North Ferriby. And number 11 is my personal favourite. It's all on the delivery. It's Hyton Ben Father Christmas of Hull City. I think that's Greg's favourite as well. And this is all managed by manager Mark Robbins Redbreast. So that's the team. Sam Snowcombe, Russell Sprouts Fry, Ahmed Elf Mohammadi, Curtis Slavis, Chris Doig, Craig Slay, Tom Mince Pies, and Sherry Hawkridge, Lanell Jonah Louie, Liam Franking Sense, and Hyton Ben Father Christmas. So if you have any others, please get them to us and we'll reveal them in the new year. So that's it for the festive special. We've had so many great moments of the season so far and many more to come, I'm sure. Thank you for all your messages and your interaction. Now, Grimsby Town have been kind enough to supply us with their moments of the season so far. So to see us out, here's some of their goals. Brown, penalty spot, keeper comes out, misses it. In it goes, that's the equaliser, and Disney has the goal. Three minutes to go to half-time. So Town still have it. Brown on the edge of the area, lining up his shot. Doesn't do. Oates, Oates shoots. Oates scores. What a way to make a debut. 84 minutes gone. Reese Oates, on loan from Barnsley, makes it 1-0. Good ball. Finds Neil to the edge of the area. Gets past one man. Shot comes in. It's in the net. Scott Nielsen has got the equaliser. Goal. Pittman gets the equaliser. 13 minutes gone in the second half. Pittman makes it 2 2. Right into the corner. Right into the bottom corner. Corner. You will not find, you couldn't place it better. 